What's going on YouTube? Jeans here. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're bringing you guys a meta Gouging Fire team for ranked Regulation F. Now, Gouging Fire, out of all the new Pokemon that came out in the Indigo Disc DLC, I believe it has one of the coolest designs. And on top of that, its typing's amazing, Dragon and Fire. Now, this Pokemon, I haven't really used too much in ranked Regulation F. I only showcase it once on the channel. So, hoping to get rocking with it with this meta team. You guys can definitely use this team to push high ranks in Master Tier. But Gouging Fire sitting here with Protosynthesis and the Booster Energy as item with Burning Bulwark, Breaking Swipe, Heat Crash, and How to Boost Attack Stat. Absolutely love this move set. You got that brand new Burning Bulwark Protect move with Breaking Swipe and Heat Crash for two stat moves. And like we already mentioned, How Attack Boost. Cannot go wrong with that. Definitely cannot go wrong with this. Other Pokemon on today's team is going to be Shen Pao. Shen Pao can pair up with all the physical attackers, such as King Gambit, such as Galaxian Fire, and on top of that, the Rillaboom on today's squad. Final two Pokemon on today's team is going to be Water Ogre Pond, just such a good Pokemon in the meta, and last but not least, Flutter Meme. This Pokemon's too good not to bring into the meta. Come on, man. It's Flutter Meme. If you guys want to rent the team for yourself, the rental code is at the top right hand corner. And if you do enjoy today's video, make sure you leave a like on it and subscribe to the channel. But without further ado, let's hop into our first match, showcasing Gouging Fire. First match is on its way. We actually are going to have a tough time. They got Urshfu, they got Ogre Pond, and they also have Tornadus to set their rain. This team has no way of weather control, so we're going to have to deal with it. The other three Pokemon that they do have is more of a Trick Room side of things with Iron Hand, Ursaluna, I should say Blood Moon, Ursaluna, and last but not least, they got the Frigraph to set the Trick Room. So who should I go into here? It could lead Tornadus, they could lead Frigraph. I feel like it's either one or the other. The Pokemon that I'm going to like here is going to be Ogre Pond. Kind of can counter that water, the water little Pokemon they have. Ogre Pond, Urshu. Yeah, I like Ogre Pond here. But who else should I bring? Who else should I bring? Rillaboom's not bad, Fake Out Control, Shen Pao's not bad. I might need Shen Pao and Rillaboom. And the reason being there is they have no terrain control. So that could be pretty good. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to bring Ogre Pond in the back end. And last but not least, we could go Gouging Fire, but I feel like we're better off going Flutter Main or King Gambit. Right? Gouging Fire's, it's okay here. It doesn't do anything crazy. I think we're better off going Flutter Main or even King Gambit. And I kind of want to, I'm kind of leaning towards King Gambit here. Especially with Sucker Punch late game, we love a good old Sucker Punch. We love a good old Sucker Punch. I know they have Frigoraph, but still we have a dark move that will be super effective onto it. If Frigoraph does come out onto the field, we just can't use our first turn priority moves. That's all. That's all. No big deal. Let's see who they lead, because I do think this one is going to be tough. I definitely do. I think they're going to go Rain over Trick Room, right? Yes. Tornadus and Urshfu. See, I told you guys. I told you guys. So we got Shen Power here. We got Robin, which is such a solid lead for us. And that's actually Dark Urshifu. That's Dark Urshifu. So that just kind of like ruins my whole mojo. Like, okay, now it's kind of weird. You got Dark Urshifu on the field. That is weird. So I could Icicle Crash. They could go Tailwind if they want. Um, huh. I think I'm just going to Icicle Crash. And on top of that, I think I'm just going to fake out the Urshifu this turn. I like that. So we'll look, do some big time damage onto Tornadus. He's just gonna detect Urshfu. That's all good. It's all good. Fake out's gonna get blocked. They probably set up a Tailwind. Right? They're gonna get Tailwindy with it. Yeah, and we're gonna Ice Over Crash and just get rid of this Tornadus. So, not a bad turn for them, not a bad turn for us, considering we get rid of this Tornadus. And on top of that, they get what they need out of Tornadus. They get the Tailwind out, and now they have their Pokemon to thrive out in the Tailwind for the rest of the turns. So that's the only problem with taking out Tornadus early is when they set up Tailwind, they kind of would rather die out than be on the field because it's just more turns of their Pokemon in Tailwind. So now they're going to roll out into Iron Hands. And from here, I could actually just hard swap maybe into Gambit or even Ogre Palm. And I'm trying to think of who I should actually swap into because I think they're going to fake out Shen Pao all day. Right? They got to fake out Shen Pao. You gotta fake out Shen Pao. I definitely want to Grass Guy, but I think I just want to swap you. I don't want to protect you. I really don't want to protect you because Urshfu hits your protect. So you know what? I'm going to just hard swap into Ogre Pond here. And just kind of get after it that way. And go for a Wood Hammer into this Urshfu slot. So we'll swap to Shen Pao. We will save it for later with that lovely little Focus Ash. We'll try to waste out some Tailwind turns. But Urshfu has got to go. We need to get rid of this Pokemon. 
Fake out does go oh, into the real of him slot. That hurts his soul. Close combat's gonna fly in here. That hurts. That definitely hurts. Defense is dropped. I mean, we can start grassy gliding from here, which is not bad. Robum's gonna flinch, and that fake out turn was good. It was definitely good. So I could have stayed in there with Shen Pao. I could have used my focus dash there. Um, but from here, I'm just gonna go try to double down in Urshfu here. Let's go grassy glide, pull and leech, double down in Urshfu. I doubt they protect with like one or two turns left in Tailwind. It would be an odd protect, but since I said that, now they're definitely gonna detect that thing. I'm gonna be so upset because I'm doubling down right into that. I'm doubling down. So we're trying to get rid of these Tailwind turns. And then just get my Pokemon Thriving from there. Grass Guide is going to fly here. Do half damage, which is beautiful. He's just going to go for a Wicked Blow and take out the Ogre Pod. So I can Grass Guide and finish off that Urshfu through this next turn. Which would not be bad. And he's just going to go for a Drain Punch here, which will chunk up a decent amount of damage. Cool. Okay. So from here, actually, Grass Guide won't KO, considering he just got some HP there. I could double down. I could go into you. I could Terrasalize. Man, you're Dark type. I think now would be the time to use our focus dash, right? If anything. If anything, now would be our time to use the focus dash. So from here. From here, I think we just read actually a detect coming out here. We terrestrialize in the stone. I think he's going to detect. I think Urshfu detects. So, you know what? I'm just going to double down into Iron Hands here. I think Urshfu's detecting him. I really do. I don't know why I feel it. I feel it. So, I'm going to double down into this Iron Hands slot. And we'll look to tackle that Urshfu next turn. Right? I know we've been leaving Urshfu on the field a bit too long here. We don't like it. But still, if it detects here, this could be a big turn for us. And it does. Come on, man. Come on, man. Solid read from us. We're going to be able to drop a nice level Icicle Crash into this thing. Get off some nice damage. High Horsepower should be able to chunk up some damage as well. Can High Horsepower KO? Oh, you're going to get off the Drain Punch first. So you get back some HP. So you indeed get back some HP. Good amount. Maybe almost all of it. Nope. Not all of it. But a good amount. High Horsepower going to fly here. That's a beautiful turn for us. We get rid of the Iron Hands with a crit. With a lovely little crit. Okay. So now Urshifu's sitting on the field. It can't attack. Tailwind should be done. Which is massive. And from here, Shen Pao should be fastest on the field. Should be fastest on the field. It's a really good matchup here. Ursula Luna comes out here. So yeah, I should be fast on the field. They still have Terra type. And is their Tailwind gone, or they still got it? Okay, it's gone. Might be gone the last turn. So now, honestly, might be the best turn to actually double down into. Hmm. We could double down to Urshfu here. But honestly, I'm going to do this, and I'm just going to go for a Wood Hammer. Do we think he's going to Sucker Punch me? There is a possibility. I'm gonna go Woodhammer into the Urshfu slot. And the reason I say that is because if he sucker punches my Shen Pao, then we still get the KO on the Urshfu. But if he doesn't sucker punch my Shen Pao, then Shen Pao KOs Urshfu and Woodhammer will slide over onto Ursuline. Okay, he ends up protecting. That's that's even better. That's even better. And there's the sucker punch. So this is exactly why we double down into the, this Urshfu. Exactly why. Just so we make sure it goes out. And now it turns to a 2v1 situation, which is massive. Which is absolutely massive. Woodhammer coming in hot here. Bye-bye, Urshifu. Get it on out of here. So smart calls for us to actually make those... Use those moves in that formation. Hopefully that made sense to you guys, the way I, I explained it. I just think that was a solid play. That was just in case the Sucker Punch did come out there. Everything worked out perfectly. So we end up protecting the Ursaluna. I expect to take some damage there, but he didn't, which is big for us. And from here, we don't have our terror types. So from here, I'm just going to drop Kowtow Cleave. And might as well just go for Woodhammer, right? Big time damage. They have terror still, don't they? I believe they do. Maybe they use it. But Woodhammer's going to do insane amount of damage. Kowtow Cleaves. Got to clean this one up, no problem. Not a problem. And that's going to be game. Match number one going to me. 
We didn't get to use Galaxy Fire, but I promise you guys, in the second match, we'll use it up. We're moving on to match number two, and we're going up against a Gouging Fire team. They also have Indeedee and Iron Crown. Nice little strong combo there, alongside with Cresselia and Iron Hands. So they can go Trick Room here. They're most likely going to go Trick Room here. And then they also have Gouging Fire. So this, is, this might just be a slow Iron Crown, right? Because it seems like this team kind of thrives around popping Trick Room with Cresselia, getting off some big time damage with Torkoal and Iron Hands, and then maybe having an Indeedee Iron Crown combo in the back end, right? Makes the most sense. Definitely makes the most sense. But who should I lead here? I definitely want to bring in Gouging Fire for you guys in this match. I could maybe lead it. I like the booster energy on him, especially with the speed boost. So I might just want to lead it now. And maybe go for a Hal boost. That's not bad. That's definitely not bad. So I'm going to go into that and I might lead it with Shen Pao. Just some big time damage. They could go into like a fake out user with Iron Hands. And in that case... But I'd rather go... No, I, I want Shen Pao. So I'm going to go Shen Pao here. In the back end, I'm going to bring King Gambit. And I think will be. Just a lot of physical attackers to pair up with Shen Pao. Something I really like. Especially all the first 10 priority on the squad, too. It's going to work well. It is going to work well. I could actually go into Ogre Pond instead of Rillaboom. And I'm going to do that. And the reason I want to do that is because of Iron Crown's terror type into water. And on top of that, Torkoal. Torkoal's a massive threat to us. I don't want to go into King Gambit and Rollaboom, just have one Heat Wave, take them both out, no problem. I'll be able to have Ogre Pond. I can Terrasilize, put the Mask on, get the special defense boost on top of that to deal with Torkoal, and then try to do some damage on that thing, because that thing is just a problem. Torkoal is really just a problem. So let's see who they end up leading here. It is going to be Iron Crown and Deity come out here. I don't, I don't mind that. I do not mind that. So I could Howl. Um, I have Dark Typing to kind of deal with, with the Iron Crown, but... Tachyon Cutter, looking scary. Definitely looking scary. So I could Howl up this turn. I could definitely Howl up this turn. It just protects Shen Pao. They could pop Trick Room. They could go for Expanding Force. Um, hmm. I'm scared of the Tachyon Cutter more so than anything. So you know what? I'm going to Howl this turn. I'm going to get this attack boost. And I'm just going to protect Shen Pao. The reason I want to protect Shen Pao, obviously, Tachyon Cutter. Hits twice, you can take off my focus action one turn and KO me on the next. Okay, so I'll, howl. I'll get this boost up here. They might end up terrestrializing this. This Iron Crown. Iron Crown's such a threat. End up with all in DD. Okay, that's fine. This is gonna be a Trick Room pop from Iron Crown? Maybe not. This might just be a Protect from Iron Crown. Terrestrialize. So they're gonna Terrestrialize. They swapped it in DD out. And the Indeedee swap's a little odd, right? Maybe they just want it for terrain control later. Maybe they th think I brought uh, Rillaboom for terrain control. But he's going to Terrestrialize straight in the water here. I'm going to protect the Shen Pao. I believe a Tachyon Cutter is coming into the slot. And I'm going to Howl up. It's a beautiful attack boost for me and the Shen Pao. And there's a Tachyon Cutter. So good read on our end. Great read on our end. Beautiful read. Beautiful read. So right now we have speed, right? We have speed all day. So I can just go for a breaking swipe and I could just double down into him. I'm gonna double down into this thing. Hopefully he doesn't protect. If he protects this turn, then we'll just swap Shen Pao next turn. But I'm just gonna double down into him. And there's protect. So protect Trick Room coming out here. Maybe I should have made the read. That was a good chance for us to make the read. Breaking Swipe, still going to chuck up some damage on the Crest. Nothing crazy. And Sacred Sword's going to get blocked. So from here, again, he's probably just going to spam Tachyon Cutter. And I think at this point, we might just want to... Do we attack here? Do we attack with Shen Pao, or do we swap Shen Pao? Because Tachyon Cutter's one scary move. It's definitely looking scary. So I could swap into Ogre Pond here. Ogre Pond's not... Swapping. I think that's more so going to be my play. Could go for Heat Crash. Heat Crash, not bad. Could Heat Crash to Crest. Because Crest is kind of just there to heal up. So yeah, I'm going to Heat Crash to the Crest Celia, And I'm going to swap into Ogre Pond here. I love the Shen Pao. I really do. But Tachyon Cutter, uh-uh. No bueno. Not good at all. Not good at all. The Galaxy Fire is showing here on the field. Plus one on attack, which is beautiful. 
plus one on attack. And I wonder if plus one actually... Oh, you're going to psych up here. You go for a psych up. You're going to copy my, my stat changes here. I don't have any stat changes. And Expanded Force was a great call from him, and he's going to pop it. He crash going to fly here. If he crash doesn't pick up the KO, which is tough news. And wow, he read the Shen Pao swap. You, you little biscuit. You little biscuit. I might double swap here. Because he's going to heal up. I'm going to double swap into my dark types. I'm going to waste out some tricking turns. I'm double swapping into my dark types. This is expanding force all day. Wow, that hurts the soul. So we gotta waste out some trick and turns now. He's gonna go for a Lunar Blessing and Expanding Force most likely, right? Did I double- I double swapped, right? Yeah, I double swapped. So I'm gonna double swap into my Dark types. I wasn't expecting to go for Expanding Force that turn with Chen Pao on the field. Definitely not uh, expecting it here, but there's the Lunar Blessing. Kinda sucks because now this thing is just getting some HP and it's gonna use it next turn because we might just double protect. There's the Expanding Force. Okay. Jeans use the rare double protect. You don't see that too often, right? You do not see that too often. So from here, I'm just going to Kowtow cleave this. And I'm just going to protect you. I'm going to get rid of the crest here. I'm trying to just get rid of these trick room turns, right? <laughs> We're really just trying to get rid of these trick room turns. He has a withdrawn Cresselia. You're going to go into Indeedee here? I kind of hope. I kind of hope you go into and now you're gonna go into Gouging Fire. Such a solid swap. And they're gonna end up protecting. Okay. I'm cool with that. I don't mind it. I don't mind. I could go straight Dark type with King Gambit, which might be my play next turn. Kaltak Lee's gonna fly here. Does great damage. He hits so hard. He hits so hard. And now from here, we're just gonna go into straight Dark type. And who are we gonna attack? Iron Crown, probably? Yeah, because it's either we do big time damage on the Iron Crown. Or they swap into Indeedee. So I could swap into like Gouging Fire here, which wouldn't be bad. They could go for a Burning Bulwark, which is most likely they're going to be the play. And I think from here, we just keep our Shen Pao alive. Just, we're going to swap into Ogre Pond just in case they want to stay in here and go for Attack Young Tiger. Now there's a swap, and that's why we made that read of the Indeedee coming in here, right? Oh, it's going to be Crest. That's fine too. Crest is dead. That works wonders. And you're going to go for a Burning Bulwark? Most likely, right? Most likely. Yo, this is a great match. We've been having some good matches on the channel recently. Swaps, like a bunch of swap in and outs. That's how you guys know it's a good match. When you when you have to swap in and out a lot of times and your opponent's swapping in and out a lot of times, that's just it's just such a good match. It really is. And this one is just phenomenal. So now I use my Terra. You're going right in the Dark type. And there's the Burning Bulwark. Good call on our end. And on top of that, we get out our Ogre Pond, which you can't even see on the screen. Got that cleave gonna finish off the crest. Bye bye, crest. Trick room's gone. They have Indeedy left. They have Iron Crown. We got some good Pokemon on the field now. And we have a great Terror type with Dark. A lovely Terror type. Wasting out the Trick Room turns perfectly. Not losing one Pokemon. We did take some big time damage on Ogre Pond and, uh, and my Gouging Fire. But. We then did the double, the ye old double swap. You don't see that too often. But I can tell you exactly what's going to happen this turn, though. I already know what's happening this turn. He's going to Terrasalize into Fairy. Into Indeedy. So in this case, I'm just going to double down. Or Horn Leech get back some HP? Yeah, probably. Or I could go for Ivy Cudgel, but I'm going to double down. No, they're going to just stay that typing. Oh, no, they already used their Terra. I totally forgot. Only each comes out here, I get back a little bit of HP. We love it, and if I would have realized that they used Tower already, I would have tried double down. Or I would have went after Gouging Fire, but they used Follow Me anyway. Which is fine. He's just gonna Defiant Pop here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for making my boy super, super strong. Super strong. So now the only problem we're sitting here with is going to be this Iron Crown. Iron Crown is gonna be a huge threat. Um it can't use expanding force onto my onto my what's it called though, which is great. Onto my King Gambit. Which is just beautiful. So I'm now just straight dark type. And from here, who should we go into? How fast are you? 150. 
They're almost maxed out on speed. I doubt they're maxed out on speed in a Trick Room Squad. I'd rather just go for a big and swipe into them, right? Or I could go Shen Pao. You know what? No, we're going to go Gadget Fire here. I'm going to go Gadget Fire. I'm going to go for a break and swipe. Real question is, can Tachyon cut or KO us? Maybe. Maybe. This one's going to be close. But from here, Kaltak leave definitely flying out here. We're going to go for a breaking swipe here. Try to finish off their Gadget Fire. I'm hoping my Gadget Fire can outspeed. We'll see. We'll see. Look at my boy. Is that mine? No, that's theirs. Get that one out of here. Mine's way cooler. Mine's way cooler. Plus, mine, hopefully, is going to be winning this match. Okay. Make a move. Make a move. So, we got them in a good position right here. They could still win this match. It's definitely still really, really close. But I feel like the double swap really changed the tides. It ends up going for a burning bulwark. That's no big deal. No big deal. As long as uh, Iron Crown doesn't KO my Gambit. And I don't think that can KO the Gambit. I hope not. It doesn't. Okay, I was correct. So, beautiful. That should pretty much wrap it up. Because I think plus one Kowtow Cleave. Should finish this thing off alongside with this breaking swipe. And I wonder if I take a burn from that burning bulwark here. I don't think I do. No, I don't. I'm fire type anyway. But Contact Cleave coming in hot here alongside with the breaking swipe damage. Finishes off Iron Crown. And just a perfect Terra and a perfect play by me to get out both my dark types. Predicting the expanded force and then terrestrializing and just taking control of this match. Beautiful. Awesome. This one's over. Wrap it up. We go for another Contact Cleave here. And on top of that... Drop a nice little breaking swipe, and they just cancel the match. So 2-0, let's go hop into our third, look for that perfect record. Moving on to our third and final battle. Absolutely lighting up the rank ladder with this team today. This team is amazing. Like I said, I want to bring you guys a meta team with Galaxy Fire to help you guys push high ranks in Master Tier. So if you guys are struggling, give this team a try. Definitely do it. But um, who are they rocking with today? Who are they rocking with today? Incineroar, Urshifu, I'm going with Tornadus. And then uh, Fluttermane, Amoongus, Rillaboom. So pretty standard team right here. Real meta as well, just like us. Um, I think they're definitely going to have to bring in Tornadus for a lead. So maybe our first turn priority Pokemon could be really good. King Gambit could be good here as well just for Defiant Pops. I do kind of like that. Or I could just go maybe into Fluttermane. Fluttermane is actually really solid. Here. So that's someone I am going to want to lead. So I am going to do that. So I'm going to go with that. And I think I might lead it with the Gambit. I just want to dodge Intimidate. Don't feel like dealing with that. And then bring Shen Pao. And last but not least, Galaxian Fire in the back end. Yeah, I'm down with it. I'm definitely down with that. So let's lock it in. Let's lock it down. Let's look to grab ourselves a win here in match number three. But if you guys made it this far into the video. And if you're not subscribed to the channel yet. Come on, man. What do you watch my videos this long for if you're not subscribed? Support me. Help me grow as a content creator. Click that big red subscribe button. Join the Jeans community. We're actually pushing on 24,000 subs, I believe. 24,000. It just blows my mind. We might have actually hit it. No. I'm actually, from the time that I'm recording this, I am at... I'm, I need 48 more. Actually, 38. 38 more subs. Hit 24,000. You guys are crazy. Thank you guys so much for the support. It really does go a long way. We we'll read the Intimidate turn one. We get off a nice little Defiant boost. So Water Urshifu is here. Um, they could Terrastalize. We could just Terrastalize and pop a Dash and Gleam. And I think that I'm going to do that with the choice specs. Just get off some damage. And I'm just going to either protect the Gambit or Swords Dance it. I think I'm going to Swords Dance it. The reason I'm going to Swords Dance it is, if they fake me out, they fake me out. It's no big deal. I take a little bit of damage. But if they don't fake me out, then I get off Swords Dance. Or if they decide for Urshfu to go into close combat in the King Gambit, that just gives my Flutter Mains plenty of turns. So, I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that. So, we're going to Terrastalize. Get that Fairy Terror rolling. The only thing that could really stop us here is if they're reading us Terrastalizing and they fake out the Flutter Main, Or if Urshfu is Choice Scarf. And he's going to Terrastalize Water and just dump on me. That'd be massive threat. We would hate that. We would definitely hate that. And it's looking like they're Terrastalizing Water. But, but, hopefully he's not choice. Because this Dazzle Gleam should be able to do some big time damage. Because I don't mind my, uh, my Flutter Main going down. As long as it gets off the Dazzle Gleam. Stab, Terra Boost it, choice Specs. Cool. Okay, so we're guaranteeing getting off this. No fake out does come out here, so smart turn for us. Oh, are you going for a Flare Blitz here? Oh no, we don't like that. 
Oh, you're going after him. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. He actually soaks that. He actually soaks that. Again, if you take out my King Gambit, you take out my King Gambit. You're just giving Fluttermane some more turns. That That is odd. Now, I, it makes no sense for them not to go into everything vice versa. Right? Because if they went Surge Strikes into my Fluttermane, my Fluttermane dies. If they went Flare Boots into my King Gambit, my King Gambit dies. But now I'm popping a Swords Dance. Now I'm popping a Swords Dance. He can go for Aqua Jet, though. But it's like, who is he going to take out? Huh. He's got to take out the Fluttermane here. I'm going to try to take out Urshfu. Yeah, there's Aqua Jet. Kind of tough. I didn't have Protect. I would have loved to protect the Fluttermane that turn. Instead of Parish Song, we... Mm, I mean, it's Choice Spec, so... Protect didn't really matter. The Fluttermane drops out here. Can my boy outspeed? I was going to go for a Sucker Punch, but if he's outspeeding... Yeah, this is rough. This is rough. Yeah, if we would have went for a Sucker Punch, his Aqua Jet would have came out before a Sucker Punch. And... We would have just failed. Wow, well, real solid turns from him. Especially the second turn. Now we're sitting here in a weird, tough position. So now I can Sucker Punch his Urshfu no problem because this Shen Pao should be faster, right? Yeah, 205, you're faster than the Fluttermane. So Sucker Punch can come out here. And for Gouging Fire, do we just set up maybe a... A Howl? We could Howl up. We could. We could Howl up. We could for sure Howl up. Now, the problem here is, do you have any back-end Pokemon that can really do a sturdy? Because I might use my Focus Ash here. Let's see who they have in the back end. Maybe Fluttermane. Ooh, Rillaboom. Yeah, Rillaboom's looking a little rough for us. But you know what? I'm going to use my Focus Ash here. Maybe use my Focus Ash. Because my plan is to Sucker Punch the Urshfu. Take it out. If Incineroar goes for Flare Blitz, he goes for Flare Blitz. But on top of that, we're just going to Howl. And he's going to Detect. Oh, you son of a biscuit. Great play for him. Great play for him. And this third and final match not looking good for us. Our opponent's just outplaying us now. They just outplaying us. But I get the, the Howl boost. We really needed him not to protect there for us to start to make a comeback. But he goes for a knockoff instead of a Flare Blitz. That helps. That helps because I'm just going to actually protect now. I'm going to Breaking Swipe just in case he swaps to Urshfu. Just in case Urshfu gets a swap here. Or if Urshfu, say, goes for another Detect. I don't know. We just don't want Sucker Punch to fail. So, I'm just going to protect the Shen Pao. Surprise they went for Knock Off. Right? That's weird. That's weird. Knock Off over Flare Blitz there? Very odd. Maybe they expected me to Terrasize. I mean, didn't I already use my Terra? Well, no, I didn't. No, I didn't. I already used it. They ended up not going for Aqua Jet here. We take out the Urshifu. And we get off an attack drop onto the Instant Roll, which I think is going for a Flare Blitz here to KO me, right? Makes the most sense. Then you go for a Drain Punch. This thing's rocking Drain Punch. I already KO'd my, uh, my King Gambit with it. But hey, now we have an attack drop onto Instant Roll. That's huge. Both my Pokemon are plus one. And we stand a fighting shot. We stand a shot here. Fluttermane coming out here. We don't like that. I do like a Sucker Punch, though. I do love a Sucker Punch. So I'm going to Sucker Punch here. Um, Huh. I think I just had to break and swipe. Or I could Heat Crash. We definitely want a Sucker Punch. Do we think a plus one Sucker Punch KO? I hope so. I really hope so. I'm going to actually hope on that. So he ends up Witch on and Sinnoh. That's fine. That's fine. So he wants to get that Intimidate off. He might just protect here. The real boom's gonna come back out or come out here for the first time. That's looking scary now. I'm gonna be able to break and swipe it though and put a minus one onto it. Sucker Punch gonna fly. Can this KO? It does! Plus one Shen Pao coming in hot. So out comes the breaking swipe. Real boom's gonna be minus one for the rest of the match. And honestly, I think our best bet would just be to be protect Shen Pao this turn. 
and go for another Hal. Because now we're back even on attack. They don't have Terra. And I love our, our stats up against these guys. We're not stats, our typing. Yeah, because I have Sacred Sword to take out Incineroar. I got Heat Crash to take out Rillaboom. So I'm just going to protect you. And if you're going to allow me to go for a Heat Crash, I would love to. Or I can go for how. Actually, Heat Crash is fine. We don't need the attack boost. We don't need the attack boost. We just don't need it. The attack boost is it's just not needed. Our moves are going to KO these things regardless. So let's just attack instead of going for a how here. I think I was going to come into the Rillaboom slot. Are they doubling down into my boy? Maybe. Let's see. Drain Punch. Drain Punch. Cool. Block. So from here, he could outspeed me with Grass Glide, but I believe both my Pokemon soak Grass Glide. I know Gouging Fire soaks Grass Glide. And I'm almost positive Shen Pao does. So from here, we're just going to go for a Sacred Sword. And Heat Crash. Play it simple. For the perfect record. For the 3-0 perfect record for the Jeans Online Gaming Community. Come on, man. The Jeans Online Gaming Community, baby. This is for you guys. Let's see it. Let's... Do it. Grey Sky flying. We should soak. Yeah, we soak pretty, pretty, pretty well. Heat Crash finishing off Roll Boom. Bye bye. Thanks for coming. Sacred Sword finishing off Incineroar. Show it to me. Bye bye. Let's go. 3 0 perfect record. Dominating with Gouging Fire and this meta squad. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Three battles, three wins for you guys, showcasing this meta gouging fire team. Like I said, rent, rent the code, top right hand corner, rent this team up, use it in the master chair, push high ranks, because I'm telling you guys, this team is the real deal. As phenomenal Pokemon, great typing, great coverage, everything you need for a top tier meta squad. But guys, that is going to be it for today's video. If you did enjoy the content, don't forget to smash that like button for me. And if you're new here, click that big red subscribe button so you know when all of my videos go live. Seriously, you guys rock out. Make sure you spread spots every day, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out, everybody.